Welcome back to One Bills Live. Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you here on a Friday, just a day before Bills Bears at one o'clock on Christmas Eve. Pleased to be joined now by Hall of Famer and NFL Network analyst Kurt Warner. And uh, Kurt, first, thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas. And uh, you've been hard at work in the film room. Uh, <laughs> I was just joking with you before the break. I was trying to do a quick crash course knowing you were coming on here. Uh, to see if I could pick up anything off of your one hour plus breakdown of Josh Allen. Uh, I guess we're going to have to leave you to provide all the answers because there just wasn't enough time in a four minute commercial break. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, well, I'm always in the film room. I mean, it's kind of what I do. It's, it's really the prep I do every single week as I watch every game, um, you know, because I mean, there's so many narratives out there and there's so many people that want to jump on what somebody else says. And to me, I, I always feel like, the best thing I can do is, is watch every game and really know what's going on, knowing what's happening, know what, you know, offenses and defenses are doing. And so that's my prep every week. And then uh, every week I, I, I pull out a couple guys uh, from my QB confidential um, work and, and, and do some film studies. And so, um, you know, had some people recently that, you know, as I pick some other quarterbacks, some, um, you know, I guess second tier quarterbacks, they're like, well, how come you don't ever break down, you know, Josh and Patrick Mahomes and show us, you know, the things that they don't do well, because, you know, everybody wants to know what somebody doesn't do well. Uh, so this week I, I pulled out Patrick and Josh and, um, you know, obviously they both do a lot of really good things. Um, and they both have some things that I think they can continue to work on, but that's, that's the nature of the business. You guys know, you, you don't ever play, I played this game a long time. And I tell all the guys I coach, I've never played the perfect game. You know, there's always going to be things that we can learn from. And that's always my hope with these videos is that, you know, more than anything, they somehow find themselves back to, to the Bills or to Josh, and, and maybe there's some nugget in there that they can take and apply to their game and uh, and help them to be even better. So you get these guys, and it seems like Mahomes was obviously the first guy to come out. Now you've got Josh. Now you've got Lamar Jackson. Uh, you've got uh, Herbie, the, you know, uh, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. The guys that are at the top, you know, like Josh and Mahomes and Lamar, Lamar, who's been an MVP like you have been, have you seen a major and maybe permanent shift and what's expected from that? Because it was a, you know, was a game when, when I played back in the early, late eighties, early nineties, ultimately you had to have a guy like you could stand in the pocket and beat you. Has that changed? I don't think it has changed when we're talking about playoff time and winning championships. Now, you know, I mean, obviously, and, and I talk about it in my video a little bit. I mean, the beautiful thing to be an athletic quarterback is that as you're learning and, you know, maybe if you, if you don't see everything, because to me, I couldn't do that. So my superpower had to be seeing processing and getting the ball out. And I had to do that. Guys that are more athletic don't have to do that every time, but the best ones are the ones that can do that quite often. And then when they don't see it or, or when they miss something, they can make up for that with that incredible athleticism. But I do not believe it's changed from the standpoint that we still haven't seen a guy that we consider, you know, more of an athletic quarterback than a passer win a championship. It, it it hasn't happened or, or, or get to that place over and over again, because you still have to win that way. You know, I just, I just a firm believer, no matter how talented you are, um, that it's hard to live in a world where they're going to, where you have to make 15 to 20 special plays every game. These are the best players in the world that are going to take it away, especially playoff time, the better defenses that you better be able to make the layups. You better be able to see it and make the plays you're supposed to make in the pocket and then give me four or five of those special plays. And now we're talking about something that can win championships. So, yes, you know, we're seeing more athletic quarterbacks do more special things. But I still believe, you know, that the best quarterbacks in the league and the teams that continually get to that point where they're competing, you know, for a championship, have a guy that can play inside the pocket and make more of those throws than other guys. And Kurt, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that taking the layups because there was a stretch probably between week seven and 10 where Josh, in the opinion of many, was pushing the ball down the field unnecessarily and fell victim to a spate of turnovers. He had a stretch where seven of his nine turnovers were in the red zone. And 
they he eventually pulled himself out of that partially through more conservative offensive play that I think the offensive staff took upon themselves to try to ease him through that situation. And last week against the Dolphins, which I know you went into heavily, was probably the first time since earlier in the season where we really saw him kind of making decisions, making plays and, and spreading the ball to a bunch of different targets. Uh, how much, how important is it to kind of ha- see the offense get back to that where it's not just, Hey, Stefan Diggs, here's 14 targets. You know, you get, they got the tight ends involved last week. Naheem Hines scores a touchdown. Maybe just kind of explain the value in that if you could. Well, I mean, first thing is it won't take you four minutes in a break to realize I threw a lot of interceptions too. And so (laughs) the reason I say that is because I don't care about a quarterback being aggressive and, and having some interceptions that come with that. I've always believed if you're that guy and you press the ball down the field and you attack a defense and you threaten them throughout the course of, of every game, that is going to lead to more big plays and a better offense at the end of the day, even if it leads to more turnovers. So I don't worry about that quite as much. I mean, you still want to make quality decisions. You still don't want to force, you know, a throw down the field when there's something open underneath, but I don't worry about that as much. You know, I think the biggest thing for me with Josh during that stretch where he was throwing interceptions is I want to see him settle in a little bit more in the red zone. I feel like he gets into this mode where he feels like everything in the red zone has to be a creative play. And so he almost drops back and kind of bounces for a second or two, just going, all right, I'm going to let guys get into the route. And then I'm going to run around and I'm going to make a play. And he makes a lot of those plays, but that's where he made a lot of those mistakes as well. I think sometimes down in the red zone, um, you have to just be really efficient. You've got to know what you're going to see. You got to get set as a quarterback and you got to be ready to, to throw on time. And, you know, and that to me, I think was the biggest thing is he was running around making plays because his automatic mindset starts to run around is I can make every play. And that's what leads to maybe those negative plays. When you're playing on schedule, I think it's easier to go, Oh, that's there. That's not there. Okay. Throw the ball away, take three points. And so it's, it's finding that balance, I think more in the red zone than anything. I mean, you talk about the balance of a team. I mean, that's always key. You know, when you believe you've got a bunch of guys that can win and you can truly allow a defense to dictate where you throw the football, you're always going to be better as a quarterback to just say, hey, I don't have to try to force it to this guy or that guy. Let the offense work for me. And I think every quarterback, when they're in a good system, which I believe they have a, a, a good solid system, a lot of good concepts in Buffalo, um, you allow the offense to play for you and you're going to be more successful than feeling like you've got to do everything on your own. Um, But, you know, as I said before, I wasn't one of those guys that could do all the special stuff that Josh Allen can do. So I don't understand that mentality of how do you balance that out, right? I mean, how how do you say, oh, it's okay now to make a play, but on the last play you shouldn't have when you're used to doing that. And so I I do think that's a tough balance. And I think it's, it's one of the reasons why, Again, I look at Patrick Mahomes, I look at Josh Allen, and why they're so special is because they can do both things, and they don't always fall back on their athleticism. They play the quarterback position as well, but I see them both at times get into, you know, have problems because they want to be more creative, and they want to try to make the big play, Um, but I just think it's got to be a really, really hard thing to balance when you're good at both of those things, and you're used to making so many big plays. Yeah, we've we've had this conversation, Brownie and I on our show, Bills fans have had the conversation, the coaches have been asked about that balance that you talk about. When do you know to pull him back? The play last week against the, the Miami Dolphins, he's running out of bounds, runs all the cl- play clock, runs the game clock out at halftime. It's either it's either a touchdown or it's or it's an incredibly missed huge missed opportunity. Of course, he makes the touchdown. Uh, fine, we'll balance that. But yeah, right? So it's, it's something they constantly work at. One of the things that, and you may, I don't know if you can talk to the, about this, except for your experience um, as an analyst too. You, I mean, you played in a dome with the Rams. You won your championships. As we get deeper into the season, whether, particularly in a weekend that we're all sitting here and it, we're all like it's sub-zero outside everywhere in the United States, it seems like. How, you know, what changes for a quarterback, offensive play caller, how do you handle your receivers? 
the depth of targets in games like this. And I know all the conditions are, wind is different than snow. Snow is different than just bitter cold, all of that stuff. What are your thoughts on as you get deeper into the season, how you've got to be able to just have a different mindset? Yeah, I mean, you, you just realize every, every aspect is different. You know, the ball is a little slicker. So it's a little bit harder to control no matter who you are. You know, I mean, I'm sure Josh probably has a bigger benefit, a 240-pound guy with big hands, you know, can, can control it. But the balls get slicker. You know, receivers, you know, it's harder for them to get in and out and be as fluid with their routes. And so timing is a little bit different. Um, you know, so all of those elements, and, and you know, talk about wind, I mean, you know, it's harder to control a football in, in the wind, you know, whatever that means, you know, do you have to throw it a little bit harder and now it's cold and it's harder to catch, you know, or, or you can't control it. You can't throw some of those touch balls that you throw. So elements are, are a huge factor, um, you know, when it comes time to, to play. Now, obviously it's a huge benefit for a team that plays in those elements every day. So you get a feel for what that's like. Um, but you know, Steve, is that you know, you can practice in something all week and then you get to the game and it can be completely different. You know, there can be a different element that plays into it. And it's why we've always said, you know, running game and defense travels because, you know, the elements, the wind and, and those kinds of things, you know, timing doesn't, uh, you know, isn't affected quite as much. Uh, but the teams that can throw in the cold, I think they can gain an advantage, a huge advantage over teams that that aren't used to it. Um, by learning some of those nuances, but I just think it's always going to be harder. It's always going to be harder when, when we talk about it and every, you know, whether I'm playing in a dome or not, you put the ball into the air, there's more bad things that can happen. And so put the ball into the air when there's elements and there's wind and there's snow and, you know, guys can slip and all those things, you know, there's more bad things that can happen. Um, you know, but, but again, you know, I, I always, you know, and again, I always have fun with it, but I always say every, every playoff game should be played in a dome. So, you know, mm -hmm. best team can win because I've always said that, you know, when I played in Arizona, there was no way for me to prepare for the weather. I mean, even right. if we came out two days ahead of time, <laughs> yeah, we're not getting acclimated to the weather. I'm not getting used to the elements that I could face. And so it's, it's such a huge disadvantage for teams that don't play in it on a normal basis, um, you know, to come to, to those places. So, um, you know, elements are going to be an issue. You know, as you guys, I'm, I'm fascinated to watch. I'm calling the game in, in Pittsburgh, you know, Pittsburgh and, and Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a dome team, a warm weather team, you know, coming to the cold. I, I'm interested to see how that plays out this weekend because it is a real thing, physical as well as mental. I mean, we know mental is probably the bigger factor, but physically it is a different deal. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think it's funny as we interview a lot of these guys and, you know, these guys that play in Buffalo and play in, you know, Pittsburgh and you ask them about the weather and you kind of assume that they're going to be like, oh yeah, I love playing in the cold. And, it, and it's, a, every one of them hates it. Like every right. one of them's like, I don't like it. You know, right. the hands are hard. You know, there's times I don't want anybody to talk to me because my hands are hurting and I just need to get my hands back. So nobody likes it. Um, you know, but, but there is, you know, there is ways that obviously if you practice it every day, you can learn some tricks of the trade that make it a little bit more tolerable and, and make you a little bit more successful in it. Last one for you, Kurt. And again, we appreciate the time just quickly getting back to what you were saying about Josh and the decision-making in the red zone. This is just a theory on my part and it could be completely off the mark. Do you think he feels, you know, to your point about, Oh, I've got to make a play and a big play at that. If I can, that he knows he demands so much attention when he's on the move in terms of spies in the red zone. Cause I mean, we saw it last week, Javon Holland is spying him. That's their best cover safety. They're using him to account for Josh in case he takes off and runs. So they have to pull a guy like Justin Be Bethel off the bench to cover Dawson Knox. He can't cover him. It gets separation. It's a touchdown. Do you think he feels, well, if I'm on the move, I'm pulling somebody out of the coverage anyway. So advantage us. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's part of it. Um, you know, is that, yeah, he, he understands that, you know, on the move, you know, people have to keep eyes on him because he can run and he can do those things. I just think it makes the game, you know, incrementally harder. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when it's, when it's all scattered and it's all trying to create. And again, there, there's guys that, that play that to their advantage. And Josh is one of those that make more plays than they make mistakes there. 
But I just think, you know, the biggest thing for Josh is he's still learning the game. And I think still getting comfortable, like the red zone is hard. Like yeah. everything's quick. You know, you've got to be on time. You've got to be set. You got to know where your eyes need to be, you know, down in the red zone. And so what I think happens and, you know, with these athletic quarterbacks is that, you know, you see them wanting to get out of the pocket because the game kind of becomes easier because now it's just street ball and let's just play. And I, I only have to see what's in front of me. I don't have to read anything. I don't have to be on time. I just have to see what's in front of me. And so I remember Steve Mariucci always used to tell uh, a story about Brett Favre, um, Mm -hmm. you know, where he'd be in the pocket and then all of a sudden he'd run out of the pocket and Mooch would run over to him and go, why are you, there's a good pocket that, why are you running out of the pocket? And he's like, I like it out there. Like I feel more (laughs) comfortable out there than I do sometimes in the pocket. And so I think younger quarterbacks and athletic quarterbacks, they've always played in that world. And so they do feel better out there. And like I said, it's easier out in the field. When you get down into the tight red zone, you understand like, man, if I'm a little bit late, that's an interception. So maybe I'll just bounce and then run outside and, and be where I'm comfortable. So I, I think that's a part of it more than anything is I'm just more comfortable out there. You know, I, I'm not sure what I'm seeing and everything's moving really fast in the red zone. Let me go out where I'm comfortable and where I know I can make plays. And as you said, maybe where I feel like we're an advantage because they got to run up and stop me. And when they get their eyes on me, it, it helps me with other guys. But I think that's more of the element than anything. And I think as Josh grows and gets better, and more comfortable with seeing things and the speed down there, he'll probably stay in the pocket and and be better down there moving forward. It's just now I think his comfort zone in the red zone with, as with a lot of guys is get out in space and just be creative. Yeah. It's it's hard in the red zone because it happens so fast. The windows are small. You got to read it right away because you got to, you got to look right away. You can't, you don't look safeties off in the red zone. And if it's there, you got to take it. And Steve, yeah, like that's the biggest thing is like, if, if you're not set and ready to throw on top of that, like you can see it, but if, if you're not set, it's like, oh shoot, I saw it, but I missed it. And so there's so many elements that go into it. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but. it's true. But it's instant failure too. Those guys, you know, nobody wants to fail down there and you, you throw it quick on something you see, you might not trust. And, you know, Peyton Manning told me, and I'm sure you've had the same conversation. Every interception has got a story and nobody wants to hear it. You know? <laughs> so you got to live with That's it. That's true. Kurt, thanks for coming on, man. It's great seeing you. Oh, you got it. Merry Christmas to you guys and good luck the rest of the way. And hopefully we'll cross paths. All right. Thanks, Kurt. Appreciate the time. Merry Christmas to you. 